Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem match sticks to square. We're basically given an integer array of match sticks where each value in the match sticks array represents the length of the ith match stick. And we are required to use every single match stick we have available to make a square, exactly one square and we are not allowed to break any of the matchsticks. So, you know, we can't just take a matchstick, let's say it's of length four, and we can't just break it in half and, you know, put you know, two of that matchstick on one side and then two on another side. We're not allowed to do that. We have to put the entire four uh, units of that matchstick on just one of the four sides. But we are allowed to link up additional matchsticks. For example, we could have one matchstick of four and another matchstick over here of length three. That would make the entire side being of length seven. And as we know, squares need to have all four sides be the exact same. So if we had one side of length seven, then all four sides have to be of length seven in that case. And remember, we're required to use every single matchstick. So therefore, the total sum of matchsticks divided by four has to be the length of each of the sides, right? So in this case, we could only build this square if the total sum of matchsticks was 28, because 28 divided by four is gonna be seven on all four sides. So we're starting to understand how we can potentially solve this problem, but let's see uh, if we can even get a brute force solution working. Because what we're trying to determine is if we can create a square or not, right? True if we can, false if we can't. That's what we're going to return. Okay, so we know we're building a square. So let's say these are the four points of our square. We're going to be taking some of these matchsticks. For example, let's say we took a one of the matchsticks of length one and, there's, and then just like put it over here, right? And we want to do that so that we fill up all four sides of this square. But the question is, how long is each side of the square even going to be? Well, like we said, we can go ahead and sum up the entire length of the matchsticks, which in this case is one plus one uh, plus two plus two plus two, which I think is eight. So that's the sum of the matchsticks. And then we can divide that by four, which is gonna give us the length of each side. So in this case, we got two. That means we want to create a square where all four sides of that square are exactly two. So that seems pretty easy. But what if we had a case where, for example, we add one more matchstick to this list, right? Then we get a total of nine and we tried dividing nine by four. Well, then we get 2.25, right? That is not going to be possible because remember the matchsticks are always going to be integers. How can we possibly create a, a side length of 2.25 using integers? It's not possible, so we can't do it. So without even running our algorithm, we just found one possible way to determine if the answer is false. If it doesn't evenly divide into four equal parts, right, into like an integer, then we can return false immediately. But that's not the case in this example. So we are gonna actually have to create a working algorithm. We're gonna start off with the brute force, which is actually gonna be good enough in this case, but it's not easy to even create a brute force solution for this problem. Let's try to create every possibility, right? Every possibility meaning for every single stick, right? Every single stick we have, the, the first one is length one. We could take this stick, we could put it on the top side of the square, on the right side of the square, on the bottom of the square, or on the left side of the square, right? So for each of these match sticks, we have four decisions, right? That's kind of the thinking that we're going to be used to, uh, using to implement the brute force solution. So let's say this is the left side, this is the top side, T for top, uh, R for right side, and then this one is gonna be the bottom side, so let's call it a B. Maybe it's a little bit easier to read when it's white. So uh, for this one value, we have these four decisions we could make, right? Put it on the left, top, right, or bottom. Now you're probably wondering, squares are symmetrical, right? So for the first value we're actually choosing, it doesn't really matter if we put it over here or over here or over 
over here or over here uh, because uh, squares are symmetrical, right? All four of these sides are pretty much equal. But as we continue to make decisions after the first decision, that's where it is going to come into play. And you're going to see why. So let's just go down this left path for now, uh, because like I said, any of these will probably work for us. So assuming we put the side length of one over here, and now we have additional four decisions, right? And I'm going to assume that this is the left, this is top, this is right, and this is bottom, but I'm not actually going to write out those letters. So let's say we put it on the left side first, right? The, the stick of length one, we put it on the left side. So suppose we put it over here. Uh, now this is what our square is gonna look like so far. And now we're gonna make four more decisions using the next match stick we have. And the next match stick, the third one, is actually of length th uh, two, as you can see up above. Let's say we put that one on the left side as well. So we have our uh, third match stick, it's length two this time. And let's say we put it on the left side uh, over here. Well, if we put the matchstick over here, it's length two. So then the side length over here is now length three. But remember, our target was length two. We want each side length to be exactly two. That's how we can create a square. But in this case, that didn't work for us. We exceeded the length, right? This side length is three. That's how you know we have to stop this path. This is our brute force decision tree we're making. And this side did not work. This path in the decision tree did not work. So what we're going to do is backtrack. That's how you know this is a backtracking problem if you weren't able to tell immediately because when we make a decision that does not lead us to the correct solution, we're going to backtrack and reverse that decision and make a different decision in our decision tree. So as I said, this path did not work for us. We're going to make a different decision. And so this path would actually be putting the uh, length two on the top side, which is also not going to work for us. So we're not going to make this decision either. Now, these two are doing the right and the bottom, which will kind of work at the beginning. At least we could put the length two over here and it seems like it works. Or we could put the length two over here and it seems like it works. But remember, we have two more matchsticks of length two. And I'm basically going to show you what our decision tree is going to determine for us. But as you can tell, we don't have a lot of room here, so I don't want to draw out the decision tree too much. But basically, if we have two more matchsticks of length two, okay, uh, just take a look at this square over here. We could put one of the matchsticks over here, but where are we going to put the third one, right? We have one last matchstick remaining. We can either put it over here or we can put it over here, but that's not going to work in both cases. We can't just break the matchstick and put one piece of it over here and one piece of it over here. So what we realized is the mistake is not at this level of the decision tree because none of these led us to the correct solution. We actually made a mistake when we put the matchstick of length one over here. It would be better if we actually put it at the exact same spot as the other matchstick of length one. So this did not lead us to the correct solution. So we're actually going to put the matchstick, we're going to go down this decision uh, in our decision tree, which is putting the matchstick at the top position. So let's say we put the length one in the top position. That's perfectly fine because we did not exceed our target length of length two, right? Two is our target length. We did not exceed it. So we're good to go. We're allowed to place the matchstick over here. And at this point, you probably get the idea, but I'm just going to fast forward. We could make four more decisions here. Let's say we put the length two uh, on the left side. So there we go. And then let's say we, you know, made another, we had four more decisions of where to place the next matchstick. Let's say we chose the correct one, which would be either putting the length two over here or putting it down here, either one. And then we'll have one last uh, matchstick remaining. The last one uh, is also length two. We could try putting it here, here, or here. None of those are going to work. It's only going to work when we put the matchstick over here. And then we know we are finished with this algorithm because we put all the matchsticks in valid positions and we reached the end of the matchsticks array. There's no more matchsticks remaining and we know we placed them validly. Therefore, we know for a fact we have created a square because remember, we knew that each side had to be at most length two because that's, uh, you know, that's what our matchsticks totaled up to. And we placed all of these validly without exceeding the side length of two. Therefore, each side must be 
be exactly two, and that's obviously the case here, that means we can return true. But by the way, the time complexity of the solution, since it's a tree, the height of the tree is going to be length n, where n is the size of our match six array, uh, and the number of decisions we're making uh, at each level of the tree is four, right? We have four branches, therefore the time complexity is going to be big O. Uh, 4 to the power of n. It's not great, but for backtracking, it's what we'd expect. So now let's write the code. Okay, so diving into the code now, first thing we want to do is actually get the target side length that we are going for in our square. We can do that by taking the sum of all the matchsticks, dividing it by 4. In Python, if you want to do integer division, you do double slash, so dividing it by 4. Remember, we want to kind of keep track of the side lengths of all four sides of our square. So I was doing a picture to keep track of that, but in reality, in code, we can use an array, and this array can be of length 4. Initially, it's going to be all zeros because our side lengths are currently empty, but we're going to be building those as we go. Now, also, like we mentioned, if this if the sum of matchsticks does not actually divide into 4, we can return false immediately. So when we do a single slash in Python, so as dividing by 4 like this, we're doing decimal division. So if this decimal division does not exactly equal the integer division that we did before, the integer division is basically rounding down. So if there's a mismatch here, then we know that it does not evenly divide into four equal parts. We can go ahead and return false in that case. And there's one last little thing that I'm going to actually do to speed up this algorithm. Uh, to get it actually to pass on leak code and that's basically taking our matchsticks and sorting them in reverse order reverse meaning in descending order so from largest to smallest and the reason we're doing that is because kind of another shortcut Imagine that the target length that we're going for is two, just like we showed in that example But imagine that one of the matchsticks right? Let's say the first matchstick uh, at index zero is equal to three, then we will know immediately that this matchstick of length three does not fit in any of the four spots because it exceeds the target length of two. And in that case, we wouldn't even build our decision tree. We'd realize, okay, the first matchstick is too large, therefore we have to return false. So that's why we're sorting it in descending order. We wanna see the largest matchsticks first to see if any of them are too large to place in the grid. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now we actually get into the backtracking portion of the algorithm. What I like to do is actually define a function inside of our root function. That way we don't have to pass in some of these parameters like length and sides each time we call the backtracking function. The only thing we really have to pass in this case is the index of the matchstick that we're currently at. So first thing we want to do with recursive functions like backtracking functions is the base case. So if i is equal to the length of matchsticks, that means we went through every single matchstick and we went through them successfully. So that's when you know we can actually just immediately return true. We don't have to validate anything because we're going to be validating in the rest of the function when we actually make the recursive calls. Now we can get into the actual recursive phase of the algorithm. We have a very simple base case. So we're going to use a, another pointer. I'm just going to call it J because we're already using I. And what we're going to be doing is going through all four side lengths, right? So just iterating four times because we know we can place the current matchstick that we're at, the matchstick at index i, we can put it in either of these four sides that we have. And that's what J is going to represent, one of the four sides. Before we actually do the recursive call, though, we want to validate that this side, so sides at index j, whatever we've already filled into that side, initially it's going to be zero, but maybe we already placed a couple matchsticks there, whatever it currently is, whatever the length of it currently is, plus the matchstick at index i that we're looking at right now, if these added together, as long as they don't exceed the target length that we're going for, we are allowed to recursively uh, you know, do this. But if it does exceed the length, then we will skip it. So this is the actual backtracking portion. We're going to make a decision to add uh, at uh, this side of the square. We're going to add the current matchstick that we have up here. Then we are going to do the recursive portion. We're going to call backtracking 
on I plus one. We just used the current match stick. Now let's go to the next match stick. And we care about the return value of this function. So if this actually returns true, then we can immediately return true because we're only looking for one possible way we can construct a square. But if this does not return true, then we are going to continue with the backtracking portion. We just made a decision before we called our recursive function. So now what we're going to do is reverse that decision, aka we're going to backtrack that decision. So we're just going to do the exact opposite. So this side length, we're actually going to uh, decrement the size of this matchstick. So we just went through one of the sides, right? But maybe that matchstick, when we go to the next iteration of the for loop, maybe that matchstick will go in one of the other four directions one of the other four sides of the square. Hopefully one of those will end up returning true, but if none of them return true, that means we have to return false outside of the for loop. So that is the entire backtracking function, but you know that we, we're not done yet because we actually have to call that backtracking function. So let's call it. What's the uh, input value going to be? Just zero because we're going to start at index zero of our match six array. And whatever this ends up returning is what we can return for the root function. So hopefully this works. Let's run it to make sure. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does work and it's relatively efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.